Welcome to the podcast, Leading and Growing Your Real Estate Business by Coach James Short. This podcast is designed to help you with strategies, insights, and ways to increase sales, build and lead high-performing teams, and ultimately grow your business. Your host, James Short himself, also shares some of his secret sources on how he helps his own clients achieve business growth quickly and easily. James has been coaching those in the real estate and property industry for close to 10 years now, and his clients keep on saying, since working with James, their results have been outstanding, giving them more money, time, and fulfillment. James is offering a free strategy call to those listening to see how he can assist you to take your business to where you want to go. Simply go to jamesshort.com.au forward slash strategy and book in a time today. Now on with the show. Hi and welcome to another edition of Leading and Growing Your Real Estate Business. This is Coach James Short and welcome to another edition. Can you believe it? We are so honored and privileged to have this next special guest. Wow, she is a mover and shaker within the real estate industry. She is the pinnacle of the pinnacle and she is leading the pack, particularly when it comes to leadership, particularly when it comes to making a difference, particularly when it comes to really supporting and leading and guiding women in real estate. Tanya M. Jones. Tanya, Tanya M. Jones is, wow, she founded Tanya M. Jones Coaching in 2015 as a leadership and mindset specialist. She has advised thousands of leaders, both nationally and internationally, along with their team since starting the company. Tanja's big game is to elevate real estate leaders and agents' ability to build trust and transparency within the communities they have the privilege to serve. I love it, the privilege. And she recently partnered with CoreLogic to complete the first of its kind study, The Real e-state of leadership. Oh, we're looking forward to delving into that a little bit more. A full report of findings but soon to be available. And so we'll, uh, I'm sure there's, there's some stuff along the way that we'll find out. Now, Tanja is an NLP master practitioner and trainer. Ooh, we've got some commonality there. And fascinated with the study of human excellence and that considers herself as a student of human potential, having spent almost 30 years learning the subject. She's also the producer and presenter of TMJ TV, a weekly video series for real estate leaders and teams who want to grow themselves and their business in the least amount of time. She's also the co-founder of Real Women in Real Estate, a national network for women in real estate and property. So go and check out the TMJ TV weekly and also her website, tmjcoaching.com.au. And we are so privileged. Thank you. Welcome. Look out. Phenomenal, man. Thank you, James. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Now, I'm super excited because you are you are rocking it, girl. You are killing it out there. And every everywhere I see, every mag, every publication, Tanja, Tanja, Tanja. She's, I love it. You're killing it. Well done. Thank you. I, yeah, I feel pretty blessed, you know. I um, I was simply an average consumer four years ago, just unhappy with the lack of service and thought maybe I could, you know, be part of a positive change and then boom, fast. <laughs> here, we are. here we are here we are having fun thank you so much for the opportunity to hang out with you tribal leader and and of course your tribe cool now let's let's talk about that journey for a minute how how did that come to fruition share us share with the listeners a little bit about that journey sure sure so it was November 2014, my husband Lincoln and I were looking to sell our family home and we had a relationship with an agent who really kind of stayed connected with us for about a year and we were those vendors that were oscillating, you know, like we're ready, we're not ready, we're ready, we're not ready. Listeners will know those kind of vendors. That <laughs> Long story short, we, we decided to bring in a couple of other agents just to give us a different perspective and, you know, my background is really heavily focused on customer service and it doesn't matter what you're listing or selling or or leasing or buying if it's a human interaction i'm fascinated by the art of rapport and we were just blown away at the lack of connection and rapport and service and effective listening and communication skills by many and various agents and it just inspired me to do some research and find out well what, you know, what do the consumers think about uh, real estate professionals? 
soon found out they're still ranked the third least trusted profession according to the Roy Morgan image of trusted professions. It hasn't shifted in four years, so I wasn't alone. And then I decided to go and hack into, well, what's going on internally in this industry that sees 120,000 people employed, um, you know, and I do think it's a privilege to partner the sale of someone's biggest asset. So I, I, I just went from being, I think that there is an opportunity to elevate the skill set of agents because I believe that real estate is a phenomenal platform to achieve financial freedom mm. and it's a privilege to be able to do that. So yeah. just diagnose some key problems and use the skill that I've developed over the last few decades and thought, let me niche my peak performance coaching practice into real estate. And let's see if there's a difference that I can make. And uh, I've just, I'm having a ball. It's just <laughs> been so much fun. <laughs> and I'm not even warm yet. Yeah, that is just, it's just a leak. You're just lukewarm. Just Ready to go. <laughs> I'm just starting to simmer, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. So tell me about, obviously, with your background in relations to human potential, mindset, NLP, you would have seen language patterns you would have seen so many different things that from an outside viewing it looking at as you said before what's happening internally yeah, yeah, and yeah. what what have you noticed over over the last say four or five years in that internal barometer what are you what are you noticing out there in in real estate yeah uh, it's really simple there are two kind of orientations you can be in um, transactional or relational uh, from a customer service perspective. And I think that's really why, unfortunately, real estate agents are ranked the third least trusted profession is because it, there's a self-centric focus. Um, we're being transactional, focusing on getting the listing, getting the commission and getting the next opportunity. Yep. And unfortunately, I think many real estate agents get kind of tainted and painted with the same brush because there's phenomenal agents out there that are yeah. wholehearted servants yep. and do amazing work but you just have to have one bad experience or know someone that does. So I think there's two mindsets, transactional versus relational. Yep. And certainly the majority are transactional. And this, as you know, it's a counterintuitive environment. As human beings, we love certainty. We love security. We love <laughs> instant validation and <laughs> gratification. And then you put yourself into real estate and you're like, you're going to get rejected daily and told yep. no and, it's highly competitive. There's a world of, you know, rejection and disruption and AI and now the election and negative gearing. And it's like, ah. <laughs> and you know, Lovely. if you don't have a mindset to rise resilient in a world of rejection, and if you don't have the skill and the will to be service orientated, be relational and not make a no mean you're not good enough and not make failure mean you're a failure, if you have those skills, then you're likely to succeed. Yeah. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. really why I do what I do because A, I want consumers to have a better experience and B, the quality of life for many real estate professionals is crap right now because they're stressed out and in fear and scarcity and depressed and, and in some cases, like a client I coached last week, suicidal. Yeah. It, it's like, true. it's real. Yeah, so yeah. true. I, I love that analogy of the transaction and, and relationship component and you see it time and time again it's it's you know for some people this is the biggest and only transaction that they will do and so they're highly emotive 100%. and when you have an agent come in just like so transaction you can just see it just yeah 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 polar polar yeah, and, and you can feel it like that's the thing People buy people, not yeah. products. They don't buy okay. your logo. They don't buy your brand. They buy into it, but they buy you. Correct. And how you turn up in people's homes, in their temples, is um, critical because they buy your energy, you know? Yeah. And as so Oprah true. says, I love this quote. She, she has a quote on her office door that says, be responsible for the energy you bring into this room. Ooh, yeah. Love so that. Agents have got to ask themselves, like, because it's fair enough, you got to, you, you're putting yourself in a commission or a retainer and commission orientated industry. It is survival of the fittest, but if you go in there wanting to survive, yeah, people will sense it. 
totally, totally. Like, like your lion picture in the back, if viewers can see it. There you go. They can sense, they can sense where you're coming from, you know? Correct. Correct. So true. So obviously, I like to go a little bit personal in relation to your own story. Obviously, through life, we have challenges that have come our way. And, and obviously, through challenges that, that you've, you've come through, what have been some of those personal challenges that you've, you've risen up? You've come through the other side, but you look back and go, oh, that was a good lesson. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's such a good question. You know, this one, this one's a really, really good one. I reckon the biggest challenge I've had in my life is um, standing up and believing for myself. Because as a kid, mm. I was bullied and picked on all through primary school and high school and hardly spoke. Kind wow. of really hard to believe right now because you can't <laughs> to shut me up. And, and I was all just connected to kind of lack of self-love and lack of self-worth and allowing myself to be bullied. And, and as a result, and it's a common thing. It's a common theme for kids now and our generation and, and generations before. However, what that does to an individual is it, it programmed me to believe that I was powerless and worthless and, and, and kind of, didn't um, have the ability to create anything. And, um, and I think if I didn't shift that, I would be like many people are unfortunately um, mm. experiencing themselves as victims of circumstances and disempowered yeah. on this amazing rock floating in space. That would have been my biggest challenge through life. And it was for years. Yeah. And then something flipped when I left school and started to work and I was experiencing bully from superiors and leaders, something inside of me, James, it just went, oh, this is not okay, right? Like, yeah. it's just not okay. So I overcame the challenge by another great quote of my, one of my favorite quotes is speak your truth, even if your voice shakes. So I confronted this bully, this leader that was twice my age. Her nickname in the company I worked with was Hitler. People were scared of her. Wow. Little old me that decided to call a meeting at a cafe and really just stand up for myself. And that oh. was a pivotal moment for sure. Love it. That Probably that that was the biggest challenge. And then, um, you know, the ripple effect of when you don't believe in yourself, yet you feel that you have an abundance of potential to do something, you know, that's a pattern that, you know, we need to shift. And um, so I, I know how people feel when they feel stuck because I've been there myself yeah. before. That would, I reckon that would be the biggest challenge. And I think though, that's really appreciate and, and, and honor and, and thank you for, for sharing. I think that also enables you to be such a master of what you do because it's the connection, it's the related relatability of where yeah. people may have been stuck and you can see the patterns that they run and you go, cool, okay, let's do this and this to move you through to the other side. And when you can build empathy with people, you know, when people feel that you can feel where they've been or they're coming from, especially if you've gone through a similar experience, I yeah. really don't think, and as coaches, you know, I think we have a responsibility to, to um, you know, we can't say we understand what everyone's going through because we're not, we haven't walked in their shoes. I haven't walked in yours. You haven't walked sure. in mine, but we can yeah. uh, you know, those times where we literally have, you can really build connection and go like, I get it. I've been there too, you know? Yeah. So, um, and it, it taught me a lot. And now I'm able to share and teach what strategies, insights and tools that I learned and adopted and implemented to just really break through that paradigm of lack of self-belief and not having a voice and therefore yeah. being dominated as a result. Fantastic. Love it. Now let's flip it, right? Let's flip it. What are some of the, what's the, what's a, a win or a period of life where you look back and go, I rock that. I'm so <laughs> proud of that, of what I've done, of what I've accomplished. And, and, and these are the reasons. I feel so blessed. I have that feeling every day, not that necessarily I rock that, but the, I know I'm, I'm adding value. I know I'm making a difference. And I've got some really big ones. Like I just celebrated 20 years of marriage. Yay. A man that proposed to me after six days of knowing each other. And Love we were it. married, you know, three and a half months later. So that's a, pretty, oh, fantastic. that's a pretty awesome achievement. But honestly, you know, every single day when, when I know that by virtue of being there for somebody, 
and to see them go from being suicidal to choosing to live Mm. from having significant substance abuse um, and, uh, you know, being on antidepressants because they want to escape life and they get off them quickly um, to just seeing people produce breakthrough results. That's the rocket for me. Like that's the, and, and it's not so much Rocky Balboa on the top of the screen. <laughs> a, you know, I finish a call and I just have that moment of, I do, I get emotional, I get tears in my eyes and I'm like, man, I am on purpose. I'm reflecting people's greatness. They're choosing their lives. They're choosing their worlds. There's no greater feeling yeah. for me. There really isn't. I've got, I've had some big wins and you know, all that sort of stuff, but that that's the juice that keeps me fueled to serve. It really is. That's the real contribution though, isn't it? Yeah. That's that essence of giving back. That's that playing. It's, it's playing bigger than you. Yeah. hundred percent. Like, yeah. 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 Love it. You know, I really believe, James, that we all deserve to be happy and deeply fulfilled in our lives. And, you know, you've done NLP, Neuro Linguistic Program. It's just a fancy name for the relationship between our thoughts, words, beliefs, actions and results. I'm fascinated by that. And I just think it's miraculous that we have the opportunity, one in 14 trillion chance of even being alive. We're floating on a rock in space. We can think about what kind of coffee we want and have it delivered in five minutes, right? If we're (laughs) in Australia, yet most of us are walking around, 98% of us are walking around disempowered, disillusioned, unhappy and unfulfilled. Yeah. And so, you know, those moments when you know whether you make a big difference speaking at an event or training or one-on-one coaching, that, yeah, it's on purpose. And I feel blessed that I feel like I've, I am living my purpose for sure. Love it. Love it. So let's, let's, let's change the tone a little bit and talk about leadership because I know this is, a, this is a passion topic of yours. I know you're, you're doing some amazing stuff in relation to this area. Talk to me about leadership. Talk to me about leaders within the industry. What do you notice is those leaders are doing it great? And what are you noticing that those leaders are, are falling behind? Yes. Well, thank you for the compliment. Um, real estate has a significant leadership skill gap. Mm. We, uh, we being Kylie Davis and myself, um, so I had an initiative to do the real estate of leadership survey across Australia and New Zealand, wanting to hack into what is the current reality for leadership. And what we know is only 24% of leaders have had any kind of leadership training. And um, ironically, it also matches up with the financial performance of the business. So businesses, even two years ago, the ones we surveyed, the ones that were seeing 10% plus revenue growth um, were 24% the ones that had leadership experience. Wow. 73, I think, or whatever it was, percent of businesses that were seeing marginal growth, so less than 10%, flatlining or declining, zero leadership experience. So, A, there is a fundamental gap in this industry because let's talk about it. Most principals were once an agent working for somebody else going, I reckon I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. I want my name on that. <laughs> I'm bloody good on them, I say. They take that courageous step. They either join a a great franchise or they go independent. They take the risk. They get the building. They get the CRM system and the tables and chairs. And then they get these things called people and go, whoa. And if- (laughs) Where do they come from? (laughs) These things, right? And and we just don't have the skill. And that's the hardest part. And interestingly, it's the biggest expense line item in any business. I've got a principal I was coaching yesterday. His break even every month, James, is 200K. And his human resources is 74% of his business, right? And what happens when your people are coming in and they're not performing? That Imagine every four weeks you got to hand over 200000 nearly a quarter of a million dollars, no matter what's going on in the market. Yep. You have to have the business savviness and the strategies and the systems in place to know how to navigate that stress and get the best out of your people. So we know what the issues are. There's a massive lack of leadership, not by choice, just by virtue of what's yep. 
We know that business owners in, in, in real estate that have leadership skills are proven to be more financially beneficial from a revenue perspective. Profit is another conversation. And, um, and we also know one of the biggest reasons why leadership is a gap is because if you listen to Michael Gerber's book, E-Myth Revisited, you'll see the personality of a business owner is technician, manager, entrepreneur. Yep. Most leaders are technicians. Totally. They've just created expensive jobs, <laughs> really, with bricks and mortar and other people, and they have little time to manage and hardly any time to innovate. Yep. And, and I reckon that is one of the fundamental reasons why historical data is indicating that 50% of businesses this year won't make any money. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a massive gap. Yeah. Huge. Uh, and that's just why I've chosen to really niche a lot of my training into two areas, leadership and mindset, because I think they're the two biggest opportunities to help elevate our, you know, industry and also service that our clients receive. Love it. Now, you've obviously seen a lot of teams as well, right? You've seen a lot of teams that are going working really well and harmonious, and you've also seen some teams that are just like dysfunctional. What are you noticing? Those, what, what's the gap do you feel? It all comes back to the leader. Yes. Yep. It, 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 ha it just does. I remember when I was 17, I started my, I started work at 11, part-time jobs at 11. Right. I loved working. And I remember I started my career just as I turned 17. And the first speaker that was talking, I was doing um, a, a management program and the leader stood up at the front of the room and, and he opens with, first thing that comes out of his mouth is, a fish stinks from the head first. And I'm like sitting in the bathroom going, what does the hell does that even mean? <laughs> but it's true. It really does. It, but unfortunately, unconscious leaders point the finger and blame their people as to why they're not performing. Yep. So, you know, so um, great teams have great leadership and great leaders have three things in place that see great teams succeed. And they are they raise the standards of their people. They're really, really clear on their vision, values, financial game plan, and they don't have a bunch of shoulds. Like we should prospect, you know, we should follow up. We should exercise. We shouldn't have that glass of wine. We should, should, should. And as Tony Robbins says, we should all over ourselves, right? <laughs> exactly. Great leaders have a bunch of musts and they have fewer messages, but repeat them often. Love so it. people are really clear about what are we rocking up for every day? Like, why are we even here and why does it matter and why should we care? Yeah. The second piece is they have very simple strategies. They have strategies and tools and daily habits and rituals to build efficiency and effectiveness. Um, egoic leaders love to complicate things. Profound leaders keep it really simple. Yeah. And the third thing that they have in place is they elevate their state. They are conscious that the way they, as leaders, show up physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually to work sets the tone for the whole tribe. Love and it. you're either creating an atmosphere for people to rise and thrive or they're just eroding and imploding because there's no leadership. Oh, gold, gold, gold. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Three simple, 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 simple solutions. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. And you get those three rest that you get that right. And it's not done. Tick done. It's done. It's, no, it's, no. it's ongoing. It's <laughs> and, and the best leaders I reckon James are the ones that even keep it simple and have a butcher's paper in the kitchen somewhere of their office with those three circles of raise standards, simplify strategies, elevate state. And they've just got, blue tack with text is there and they say to everyone if you have an idea if you can see a way we can raise our service standards or a strategy that's clunky that we need to improve or a, a, an idea to elevate state write it on there and let's let's bring it to life let's put it on the agenda and make it happen then you got your people co-creating environments of success with you and it doesn't all sit on your shoulders right and it's and it's, it's just so dynamic and it's building and it's and it's internalized yeah. and it's just yeah ecosystem you're creating a whole a hundred yeah Love what it. is the ecosystem it's like a petri dish it's either going to cultivate something positive yes. or you know disease will kick in yeah totally totally so what's coming up for you what's um what's the next few months few years look like for you 
So uh, today I'm preparing, I've got a, a leadership training gig on Monday um, okay. with Harcourt and then I fly to MC the Real Estate Institute of South Australia Sales Conference next Thursday Fantastic. and then do a sales session and then a PM session on Friday. Then I fly back, frock up to do my daughter's Deb. I don't do it. Link and I get to appreciate her Deb celebrate my daughter, youngest daughter's birthday. Then I turn 47 on Ooh. Sunday. Yay! <laughs> um, and, and then I'm preparing to do a speaking gig, which will be for the biggest audience that I've spoken to so far, which is about 800 people in New Zealand um, for high courts over there. And then I'm having yummy conversations with the Real Estate Institute of uh, New Zealand around bringing our signature leadership training to New Zealand. Fantastic. So, and a whole bunch of stuff in between. So exciting. So exciting. Well, firstly, happy birthday for next week. And, um, enjoy the, the time with the family. How can, how can the, the tribe, how can the listeners find out more? Where can you send them? Where, where should they go? Awesome. Well, thank you. So um, the four usual suspects website, which is tmjcoaching.com.au or the W's obviously um, before that. Instagram, uh, I post at least two or three posts a day on Instagram. Um, so that's Tanja M. Jones. Facebook, TMJ Coaching. And then, of course, LinkedIn. Uh, I do offer free peak performance coaching every Monday and Friday live on Insta and Facebook. So I just really, I know there's a lot of people that don't have the resources to invest in a coach. So I don't want that to be the reason they don't succeed. So it's great if you want to connect and get some free stuff for the love then love um, yeah facebook insta best way to reach out fantastic tanja really appreciate your your time your energy your expertise and and just the connection really really thank you for, for everything today thank you and good on you for creating a platform to elevate your tribe to really rise and shine and be successful you equally are kicking some great goals and gaining awesome momentum so many blessings to you and the more of us that kind of, you know, work shoulder to shoulder to raise um, consciousness and do good work together, then we all win. So bravo oh, to you. Thanks. Thank for you very much. Have a wonderful day. You too, man. See ya.